afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. We are following some developing news on the southeast side of Sioux Falls. Several crews are on the scene of a house fire just northwest of Harmadon Park. Our photographer at the scene sent us this picture where you can see the attached garage and at least two cars have damage. Our photographer also said that the smoke from the fire could be seen several miles away. We're going to update you once more information has been released. Flooding along the James River in Sanborn County is forcing crews to close off a few roads. The sheriff's office says there is water over the roads. They're listed on your screen there. Authorities are reminding people to never drive on a road that is underwater because you don't know what's underneath. Well, portions of the Mississippi, the St. Croix, and Crow Rivers are all at major flood stage in Minnesota. The Mississippi River in St. Paul is expected to rise another foot or so, cresting at nearly 19 feet by Thursday. The swollen St. Croix River is drawing tourists to one of the more accessible state parks outside the Twin Cities. Senator Amy Klobuchar met with the city and county leaders this weekend who said that their flooding plan is working. Both St. Paul and Ramsey County preemptively declared flood emergencies, freeing up resources and funds. Back here in Kelloland, it felt like a nice spring day out Not there. Not bad out there today, yeah. Let's uh, check in with meteorologist Adam Rudd. It was absolutely a fantastic day to get outside if you had the chance to do so. Plenty of sunshine, it wasn't windy, temperatures were... So arguably the closest average they've been in a little while. All in all, a great start to the work and school week. It's a pity we can't keep that going, and for more than one reason. For now, though, as we head out toward Mobridge, it is looking quite nice up to the north. 56 in easterly breeze at 15 miles per hour. And we're also looking rather nice here downtown. There's a view north. 58 at the airport. Easterly winds at 10 miles per hour. Uh, that 58 is also our high temperature for the day. Now, considering that we did get off to a chilly start to the day, we're not doing too bad for ourselves. Oh, we started off in the 20s in many locations. 30, one of the exceptions to our faith. 28 was your low in Mobridge. 25 for Aberdeen and Sioux Falls. 23 in Pier. But look how we've been able to warm up. 50s and 60s in many locations, including 63. You're high today for Rapid City. 65 in Pine Ridge. 62 winter. But we have seen a couple of 40s. Mortonville and Marshall, 46 and 48 respectively. 50 for Worthington, 49 in Brookings and 50. Your high temperature so far in Aberdeen. That's also your current temperature. 61 in Phillip, 54 for Faith, 59 at the Capitol and in Mitchell, 60 Chamberlain and down toward Yankton. A pair of fives in Huron. But we are starting to see that breeze pick up a little bit to the west. East River still tolerable at 5 to 15 miles per hour. That's in the grand scheme of things, not that bad. But a 10 to 20, 25 mile per hour winds not out of the question the further west you go. And we are going to start to see that wind build a little bit more as we go into the day on Tuesday. For now, though, just a little bit of cloud cover building in for the rest of your evening. But for your day tomorrow, mainly dry in southeastern Kelowin. Maybe an isolated sprinkle or two here and there. But I think that's going to be an exception to the overall rule. Highs are going to be mainly in the 50s. To the northeast, more the same. Low to mid 50s under partly cloudy skies with a brisk easterly wind. We'll also see 50s West River, maybe near 60 in a couple of areas, but I think with that easterly wind staying in place, not to mention cloud cover building in a little bit more out west, that's going to keep temperatures just a little bit more in check. We do try to warm up, though, for the midweek outlook. More on that coming up. Look forward to it. Thanks a lot, Adam. Iowans heard from eight potential candidates for the Republican nomination for president Saturday night. Zach Fisher, with our sister station in Des Moines, was there as each potential candidate made their pitch. And we will make America great again. The former president participating virtually with a recorded message for the crowd as eight candidates eye the Republican nominee for president of the United States. We're worried about the woke left. What do our leaders need to do now? Vote Republican. <laughs> and I'm so thankful that that man that dropped out of school in the third grade to pick cotton lived long enough to watch his grandson pick out a seat in Congress. I am pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, anti-woke, anti-China. Candidates hitting on everything from Ukraine to transgender athletes. We have got to go after the cartel. The cartel is a foreign terrorist organization in Mexico. They're bringing in the fentanyl. That anybody can become a woman if you believe you're a woman. That I can have my truth and you can have your truth. And even more dangerously, 
that the truth becomes whatever those in power say that it is at any given time. Those in attendance share what they're looking for from those candidates on Saturday and what they dislike from the former president. I don't like him destroying other Republican politicians. I think that's going to hurt the political party and it might fracture it or split it. Bringing God back into the, into the government is probably one of the strongest things that I feel. All of this happening just under a year away from the official kickoff of the 2024 campaign season. In Clive at the Horizon Event Center, Zach Fisher, WHO 13 News. Students in Iowa gathered at the state capitol today to protest a bill that will allow guns in school. Senate File 543 would allow for guns in schools and on college campuses. Organizers of the rally, including March for Our Lives, says this is about making sure students' voices are heard as lawmakers vote on bills that could affect them. Students and their voices and kind of coming together is honestly the key to really speaking to these legislators, not just, you know, um, adults. And that's, again, what we're here to do is show that students know what's going on. They have a voice as well. And they want to, at the end of the day, be able to go to school safely, live a safe life. There have been several organized walkouts for other school-related legislation in Iowa. The Minnesota House is expected to vote today on a 300-page bill that would legalize recreational marijuana. The bill would allow people 21 and older to buy, sell, and use marijuana. The proposal would also create a new state office of cannabis management. If signed into law, it would automatically expunge low-level cannabis convictions. Now, if this bill passes, Minnesota would join 21 other states that have taken the same step. Marijuana is still a Scheduled One drug that is illegal at the federal level. Well, this week is National Infant Immunization Week. This morning, we had a chance to meet little Otto Hartman. Otto was born in December, and his mom, Desiree Hartman, says she had no concern or hesitation to make sure he's receiving his regular shots. He is here for his four-month checkup and his four-month vaccinations. Okay. Uh, Coming up tonight at 6, you'll meet Otto's pediatrician, Dr. Bianca Johnson, who is sharing her thoughts on the importance of childhood vaccines and how to maneuver around misinformation.